Welcome to Hopkinton Coffee Break, your home for current community talk, with Patricia Duart, Darlene Hayes, and Connie Wright. Hello and welcome to Hopkinton Coffee Break. It's kind of our Happy New Year show today. This is our first one in 2016. So we're excited to be here and um, we're going to introduce you to our guest in a sec, but we want to give a shout out to our other third wheel, Connie Wright, who's not with us today. She's at her college reunion in California. Planning it. Planning it. Planning and attending it, yeah. It. yeah. yeah. Is, isn't it? Yeah. She's no, no, it's in the fall. They're oh, planning it. Okay. Yeah, this is actually the first planning session out in Stanford. Oh, okay. Yeah, so sorry about that, Connie, but we'll see you next Thanks, time. Honey. Absolutely. And I uh, want to introduce you to our guest today, Dana Babin of Changing Gear and Pink Truck. AKA Changing AKA. Gear, okay. but from Pink Truck, yes. From Pink Truck. Oh, so we're really excited to have you, actually. Thank you. you are, yeah, this is fun. It's really nice in here. So we met you on the Real Housewife Facebook page. Yes. And she lives in my neighborhood. Okay. And I live near Church. her, so it's, you know, it's a small world, small it, community. Absolutely. It's a, um, absolutely. Well, welcome, welcome. Thank you. So much to talk about, because this is really, really interesting. So where do we want to start? I think, I think the motivation when you got involved in this was after you had your twins. Yes. And they're, what, in kindergarten now? They are. They're five now, but it wasn't long after they were born. The, they're twin girls. Uh, they were born in 2010. Okay. And it wasn't long after that that they just were infatuated with everything truck. So they would hear trucks coming down the street and they would run to the door. Our this neighborhood seems to have before, an abundance yes, of trucks, we too. Have yeah, we have an abundance of trucks, so. You know, what we finally referred to as Hop Kentucky, yes. yes. <laughs> oh, that's funny, uh, I heard that. So the trucks would come barreling down the street and the twins would toddle over to the door. I mean, this was even when they were crawling and then by the time they were toddling, they would start to use their words. And I, I remember distinctly, one of the first words was tuck, tuck for truck. Yeah. And they would hear the trucks and go running to the door, the window to watch them come down the street. And uh, so we invented a lot of truck activities for them to do. The Price Chopper was being built at the time, so that was a regular um, thing that we would go and watch from sometimes a distance, sometimes up close and personal, mm -hmm. whatever we could uh, manage to do. There was another place over by the Jumpy Place they would go to that was building um, some solar paneling type of energy plant. So watching we front end loaders yeah. and everything. And we would Oh, I would bring blankets and put out a picnic and in the love nice weather. Trucks, huh? Just watching, but you know, the a building. lot of little kids mm -hmm. love watching those truck videos, those construction videos. Wow. Okay. So they have videos for toddlers that are just there's nothing going on but building. Interesting. And so I had those videos too, but they would much rather be in person. Like we'd right. rather watch sports in person than just watch it on a video or on right. TV if we can, right? So what sparked this? I mean, I can, you know. Well, so they loved the trucks, yes. Patricia, but when we were shopping one day, I'm literally pushing one twin down the aisle and pulling the other cart, as mm -hmm. I always would do. And we were there to shop for them. They were growing little kids and they needed some new clothes. And as we're going down to the girls' toddler section, uh, we passed by the boys' toddler section and they start to squeal. And I realize what they're excited about. It's these racks of dozers, diggers, planes, and trains on the aisle. Mm -hmm. And they're freaking out over these truck t-shirts. So I managed to make my way to the girls' toddler section to realize it's bereft of any trucks no. or any mm -hmm. emblems that are similar to what you find in the, in the boys' section. Uh -huh. So at that point, I had a decision to make. Was I going to indulge them mm -hmm. and go back to the boys section and buy in the boys section or was I going to adopt what this marketing scheme had said was appropriate for my kids uh -huh. and just buy the flowers and the ladybugs and ballerinas said, yeah, <laughs> right. you must aspire as a girl to be cute and as mm -hmm. a boy you must aspire to be a pilot and an astronaut and a construction worker <laughs> and a an civil right. engineer and a firefighter and a police officer mm -hmm. so I decided I was going to go back and let them choose their t-shirts. So they started to wear these t-shirts around town and we would go to EMC Park. And as I'm sitting there one day, a woman comments next to me sitting on the bench, just kind of laughing. My kids had their tutus on with their truck t-shirts and they're these <laughs> big boxy dark truck t-shirts. And she chuckles with me and I kind of tell her why they're dressed that way. And 
she says, well, it's kind of funny because my son loves pink, and I'll oh. be darned if I can find anything pink in the toddler boy section. Mm -hmm. And so we got into a conversation about it, and what's interesting about the color pink is I studied in college, um, I took a lot of theology classes, and pink, historically, if you go back in time and if you even look at some Eastern European countries to this day, pink is a color they use to wrap baby boys. Baby really? girls were wrapped in baby in like a softer blue oh. tone. And the reason was it, they thought that pink was emblematic of power, strength, and it was too much of that for a sweet little baby girl. Interesting. Um, it was a symbol of royalty, and eventually it was a symbol of the blood of Christ for Christianity. Mm. So they would put the baby boys in pink, and they would put the baby girls in blue, which uh, blue is often what you see enshrined around a, the Mary statues right, at, right. A, at, at a Christian church. Mm -hmm. So over time somewhere, those cultural stereotypes changed, mm -hmm. and it switched. I don't know exactly where, but mm -hmm. it did switch. Um, and while pink is now a hot color for men and for boys and for athletes and, um, you know, the obsession with vineyard vines and right. it's, it's a hot color for a lot of older things, yeah. male. Even Nantucket Red is a pink. Yeah, yeah. Think about right. like a, you know, and I worked for a gentleman for years who had a um, Indian Persian background and his mother was a teacher of Persian literature and his favorite color was very much a hot pink. Yeah. And I'd always tease him. beautiful And color. I would tease my brother, he goes, you know it's a royal color. It and he goes, and my color. mother instilled in me that that's what we wore, we're royal colors. So he wore lots of very rich pinks and purples yes. and things like that. It's true. It's in, so I've learned a lot, of, a lot of things doing this work with Pink Truck. Um, and one of the things I learned about was more about the tradition of color in our history. So, so the business is named Pink Truck. Yes, yes. and so yes. what it is, it is the combination of, you know, in short, you can quickly say to someone, pink is for boys and trucks are for girls. And it's not that we're <laughs> saying that, we're saying it's for everyone. Everybody. Right. But um, our slogan is, it's time to change gear, okay. uh, which has a triple entendre, meaning, you know, it's time to change gear, shifting the actual truck. Right. It's time to change gear, you change your clothing. Mm -hmm. We call clothing gear a lot of times. Yes. And it's time to change gear, it's time to change it's the way you... mindset. Yes. yes. So we al always say, pink isn't really a color at Pink Truck, it's a mindset, just Excellent. like you just okay. noted. So. So are you getting love it. just girls buying it though? Or oh, are you no, getting no, no, gentlemen no. wearing it? I launched a, at the request of so many men who said, I would wear that, I love it. And so eventually I did launch a more boxier cut t-shirt mm -hmm. for the men. Um, and so here's one. I love the logo, it's adorable. The, it's almost like miter from um, the, the truck's design from um, cars. Well, you know, it's interesting. I tried and tried to find someone to nail the truck for me. I picked out a 55 Ford pickup and I shared images, you know, all different images of trucks that I found online, old pickups, and I sent them to these artists and they, they just weren't hitting it. I would get back, I wanted really simple, two colors only, and mm -hmm. eventually, it took a long time, but eventually a woman nailed it, and I found her through the internet, and she lives in Johannesburg, South Africa. Mm -hmm. Wow. And it wasn't until we were working to, together for a good six months that I learned she hails from Mississippi, mm -hmm. which kind of explained her acquaintance with old pickup trucks. She comes from a farm, a rural background. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, in fact, her father was really excited for the pink tractor, which was a recent design. Um, he was one of the first. He jumped online the second that it was, <laughs> was launched cute. and bought his own pink tractor. I think I may have a pink tractor unisex. Yeah, I do. So this t-shirt in the unisex size, the tractor. So you have a variety of trucks, then it's not just the pickups, yeah, so you have the pickup, the tractor. It's, we take votes at all yeah. the events that I do <laughs> on what it would be the next, what they would want to be the next design. Have you done like a fire truck or a police car? I have, and the, the, the pink, it's called Pink Engine, and the Pink Engine photo shoot was one of the most fun photo shoots because we got to use our local heroes. Okay. Here, well, as you can see, exhibited in this picture. And we've had Sarah on the show before. Yes. So it's a, yeah. Sarah it's a with with woman Lieutenant firefighter. Lynn Morahan. And yeah. Ashley is from Natick. So, and okay. this is Ashley's daughter. Oh. Um, and there were other women firefighters that have broken barriers in that field in other surrounding towns like Upton and whatnot that had hoped to make it that day but just couldn't. But boy, that was a really fun thing to do. Uh, 
So it's great. It's a line that can um, break through a lot of barriers for both men and women. And one reason I wanted to incorporate an adult line is not just is it cute right. and it's fun to wear. So I, in my other job, I do a lot of public speaking and training for police and prosecutors. So I'll wear cute t-shirts underneath my suit. I, mm -hmm. I just was wearing one yesterday like that. And I, so I'll give you an example. So I'll wear, this is the fitted women's t-shirt, but it's the pink cruiser design. Oh, cute. So I'll well, wear that see. when I teach cops and prosecutors yeah. or whatnot. And and speaking on those matters. But, because, uh, because I, I don't know, Dana hasn't shared this, is that Dana was actually a prosecutor and is an attorney. Well, I was just going to say, let, let's segue there a little bit and tell us a little bit about your background. It's very interesting. So I was a prosecutor for about 10 years. So and you're an attorney by back, law yes. by background. Yep. And okay. I focused on what is often known as internet crimes against children. It's mm -hmm. abbreviated as ICAC. Okay. So I worked as an ICAC prosecutor for the Attorney General's office mm -hmm. for some time. Um, I worked on helping to develop some digital evidence labs and things of that nature. And then when I had the twins, I just didn't enjoy the commute as much, <laughs> shall we say, <laughs> Understand euphemistically. That. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I just was missing my babies and thought, it's such a shame I have these baby twins that I yearned for for so long, and mm -hmm. now I can't really spend as much time with them as I wanted. So. You know, those, those are days are precious. Um, Absolutely. So I, I quit being a prosecutor and I launched a consulting business and I started consulting to DA's offices and doing speaking engagements for community groups and parents groups and church groups, whatever, whoever, yes. whatever, an executive, group of executive insurance, women in insurance, I didn't even, I can't even tell you, there were lots of different mm -hmm. professional women at that one in New York City. So a anything that people wanted to hire me for and do a speaking engagement sure. and then do some consulting and I may be teaching for a college again soon. I taught at BU Law for a year and, mm -hmm. and uh, what's called the prosecutor program. So yeah, that was my background and I still consult to what is called um, t the commanders of the nation's 61 internet crimes against children task forces. These are wow. task forces that are funded by a division of the Department of Justice okay. to tackle predominantly the incidence of child pornography on the internet that's traded through whatever means peer-to-peer -peer mm -hmm. wow. or, or social wow. media or whatever it is and so I have, a, I have to be away in San Diego soon for another I go away about four times a year for that and so that's when yeah. I often will wear my pink cruiser right. tee or when I'm giving um, presentations in that capacity as a lawyer oh. So, oh, but yeah, it's fun. Good so if work. you're a pilot, you can wear your pink plane. <laughs> and if you, and we have, you know, I have a few sample colors. Here's another, a navy. The red racer back is popular with the little girls. So this one the piece car. here is, that you're wearing too is actually one I of your most popular. I love the sweatshirt. This or the, yeah. hoodie yeah. is my the best hoodie. seller. So I am yeah. now in stores, nothing locally. I was going to say, where do people hello, get your local products? local stores, if you. <laughs> I'm now in Ventura County, California, the, just south of the Chicago area and in Georgia. Wow. Um, in boutiques. So I will be looking to go into more boutiques soon, but one step at a time. And I have a new design hopefully coming out soon that is already being requested in some, uh, shall we say, uh, motorcycle friendly communities. <laughs> <laughs> so, so people can get your, your products now online? They can. They can mm -hmm. shop at pinktruckdesigns.com. Mm -hmm. And uh, and yeah, it's a lot of fun. We have, you know, we, I'm wearing the lounge pants, but here's, the lounge pants are super comfy. So it's all <laughs> shabby chic, comfy stuff. I wear it, I wash it before I sell it, things of that nature. Very um, cute. Where's, um, this is the where, where, lounge where, pants. Where's everything crop. produced? Uh, in various places, the blanks are produced and then I add my embellishments to them, whether they're the embroidery or the silk screen. Mm -hmm. um, Got some cute things here. The are, they, are, they, are they made in the United States? Are you bringing product in from I other countries? I have not been able to do the made in the USA model. I mean, okay. I watched a lot of Shark Tank and every time someone from a, an apparel line was on there, mm -hmm. I watched them shake their heads when someone said, I want to try to make it in the USA and they all basically said, you got to start small and you can't afford to do made in the USA right off the bat. Right. And maybe if I got a Series A or Series B investment, yes. But this was, I was using my savings sure. and the kids' college fund. And yeah. I'm piecing it together. I'm now looking to bigger investors as we grow. But have you actually applied to Shark Tank? No, I haven't. No. I get it all the time. I get that, you know, you should no, try to go on Shark no, Tank. No, there's about, been a couple success stories out from the Boston area out of there. there are. And, um, because Kevin O'Leary is from Boston, yes. there, there's some Boston connections there and stuff. So yeah, um, I've met a couple that have been on the show, on Shark Tank, and you know you hear like you know, 
the demands and how much that it is to yes. get through that. Yeah. But even anyone who's going through angel funding and different funding sources, like you must have to do to be able to launch something like this. It's a lot of work, a lot of money. Um, it's a long range goal. You know, people mm -hmm. don't understand, I think, sometimes how much goes into a small business. Even, you know, they just see it as a t shirt. And, mm -hmm. you know, if you look, I'm, I'm trademarked. That was right. the first thing I did. I spent two years getting yeah. my trademark down. I wanted to make sure I didn't launch this apparel line, get some steam under me, get some traction, like we like to say. Uh, <laughs> and the then only to metaphors. find out I'm getting yeah. sued because, you know, so I did a very thorough, I hired a great trademark lawyer out of Chicago named Chris Cedillo, and I I, um, I made sure that it, I wasn't you gonna did run your into homework. that problem. Yeah. So that was the first thing, you know, so people wonder, you know, why haven't you gotten the stuff online, you're, you know, just give it time. Well, I this all just do started right. since 2010, so, right? Yeah, I mean, this is really a short well, the twins were born 2010. Well, since then, that's what I said, since 2010. Yeah, I didn't really pursue actively the trademarking thing till about 2012, and then 2014, December of 2014, right. I launched the website. That's yesterday. I did some soft off. sales to friends, right. just, yeah. you know, what I had So, made I mean, basically, test. it's 15 months old. Yes. Right. Which it's is not sure. even. It's like and you know you've been featured. In, old. You've been featured say, yeah. in the Globe. You've been featured in, in the Globe. A, a, a Women's show. Women's Health is about to put one at uh, supposedly. <laughs> They've asked me to create a <laughs> tap for them that they want to put in a photo shoot. I know nothing else. I okay. only know that, so we'll see. That would be in the spring issue. You know, April or May, but. I'm producing those for them now. And you went down to D.C. and did a sh show down there. I did a TV show in D.C. I happened to, this is what's funny, I happened to be there for, our, I was already scheduled to be there, I should say, for a conference for the ICAC stuff for my legal work. Right. And uh, one of the local shows down there happened to call and I said, well, I'm going to be in your area anyways mm -hmm. for this for this conference, and they said, that's fine, we'll work right around that, and we'll just have you come in one of that's those awesome. So I said, That's awesome. That's so great. So I don't have to do a special trip. <laughs> well, how old are your girls now? Well, five They're years, five, five going yes. on six or something. Yes. And what are their names? Gia Quinn ah. and Denny He. And the funny thing about Denny He lately is, so they love the pink truck stuff and all oh, the yeah. different designs, and they still like trucks, um, but Denny He has now decided she doesn't like pink, so. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a challenge with my, one of my own kids who is part of this Twinspiration brand, right, as I like right. to call it. So, but that's just happened in the last few days, and if, I mean, many people out there understand kids change their minds of course. all the time. So I'll wait till she likes pink again. Well, but she it's might fine. be an inspiration I, as you expand and grow. Who knows? Yeah, and I think it's part of our message is be authentic. So, right. you know, I will support her in her Whatever. dislike of pink, I guess, and not wanting to wear it. That's fine. You know, a lot of people will say, I just don't like pink, so I can't wear it. And I say, that's, it's not for everyone, you know. So it, even though pink is more of a mindset, not a color with us, and we mm -hmm. have so many other subdued colors, I tested the colors on a lot of different colors and tried to pick color schemes that work well with the Pantones of these, um, these colors, this gray and this gray. I mean, navy blue is my absolute favorite color on anything, and <laughs> oh, I, I think yep. it goes with it every goes color. Really well it with it. Yeah. So, and I gray mean, has been the most requested color, so that's kind of our standard go-to yeah. um, for, for men and women across the board. And then camo, of course, the camo hat. Mm -hmm. You know there are a few of you out there who <laughs> have this hat. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, and, and the hoodie and the lounge, but um, so the camo cute. hat's really good. I think what's been neat, too, is I actually have seen you become part of the community a lot. I mean, yeah, I was new to Hopkinton. So how, yeah, was, how long, tell us a little bit about your coming to Hopkinton. Yeah, how long I, have lived, you been here? I never lived in the suburbs of Boston until 2008, really. Okay. I was working and living in the Boston area, and before that I was in college or um, at law school, and mm -hmm. so I had never lived in Massachusetts. I'm from upstate New York originally. Okay. And, uh, I basically jumped in my car and moved here on a whim and got a sublease many years ago and okay. that's how it all started and then you know got a job as a prosecutor and that was my life for a long time. I met my husband on the job who's a state police detective mm -hmm. and when we got engaged and were to be married he wanted to move out to Hopkinton because he wanted to be closer to his stepdaughter Okay. so he could see her more often. So Hi. I said, here? okay, yeah. where's the, where are we going to move? So we just started looking at all the different areas around where she was with her mm -hmm. mom. And so now she, she, it was great because she got to live with us, switch yep. every Wednesday and live with us 
um, week on, week off. So, and she's at, in Hopkinton schools and loves it oh. and is a big supporter of Pink Truck. And awesome. And her name again? Her name is Riley. She's Hi, a Riley. freshman at Hopkinton High School. Awesome. <laughs> so the, um, you know, but I've also seen you really getting involved in the community. Yeah, so you were at you know you were at Pink Night, you Pink know, Drink Night, um, Oktoberfest, and, uh -huh. and, and, and you know, and being at, at different events and whether it's becoming part of PTA, that, but you've actually become part of the community. Yeah. So that you know. Well, and I had reached out for when when I first moved here, and I decided to quit being a prosecutor and be home with the kids uh, and start this consulting business part time as a lawyer. I had reached out to a number of organizations to say, hey, I'm here if you need a speaker for something. And frankly, I didn't get a lot of, it, it's funny, I got more interest from places like Newton and mm -hmm. uh, wet, but I didn't really, it didn't Takes take a here, yeah. I don't know why. But um, but when I got launched Pink Truck, boy, people really jumped on the truck. So that was that was nice to see. Yeah, that's great. Awesome. Yeah, so they've been, I, yeah, shout out to all my friends at in the community, that's in right. all yeah. respects, not just Real Housewives, but in all respects. So. That's yeah. so good. Um, and thanks to you guys for when I decided I was going to launch, you know, announcing it on, or letting me announce it on Real Housewives. Yeah. So no, we'll, it's great. And I mean, I think it is filling a need. And I think, you know, at some point, Pink Truck will be like what the black dog is. Right. Oh, I, well, I, 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 I know. Nice. Ears, you know. <laughs> I mean, the black dog ever, the black, yeah. dog, you know, the black dog, you know, the black dog, you know, everyone just, it was just a bar. Yeah, the, the, bar, okay. the bar had a dog. The bar had a picture of a dog. <laughs> you know, the, the, the Vine guys, you know. And now you don't even need the word. We're two college like best dog. friends. You know, no one knows where it'll take. Yes, exactly. we hope. And so let's, make, nice. let's put Hopkinton on the map, people. That, yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> so well, speaking I of community, so. not to switch gears, but we also want to, we're going to leave some time to talk yes. about what's going on in town. Um, well, I know our normal um, community shout yes. outs. ESL yeah. will be putting on uh, with the middle school, uh, the Little Mermaids going on this weekend. Yeah, so great little play, years. talented middle schoolers. The artwork for it that I've seen has been um, tremendous. Right. Um, I know Mrs. Curry, uh, Kathy Curry has been working in the art department and the fish, how they have them hanging from the sea, the oh, real cool. ceiling yeah. looks so real, it's really cool. So that's tonight and tomorrow? It starts this weekend, it's yeah. running this whole weekend. There's um, HEF Gals, um, End of February, so February if you buy the tickets before February fifteenth, you mm -hmm. get ten dollars off. So it it's a fun event. If you've never have you ever gone to the HF Gala? I haven't gone. It I mean, I have since I moved here been so entrenched in kids. diapers. <laughs> right. Oh, well, yeah. right. The twins. So really I'm great. just yeah. now that they're five and in school and finally getting coming out up for air a little. My husband been. works a lot. I think yeah. like we when we we used to, it's always been nicknamed the adult prom so i think right. we on times have gone have not gone whatever oh, that's fun. but oh, it's yeah. really adult dress up prom night kind of thing <laughs> it's the adult prom good dinner the um music. what else is going on the um la la um, well you have the princess tea right princess tea will be happening next month with the okay, library the and library. also the library um a week from saturday it's reopened up on 65 south street it's mm -hmm. cute it's very well organized. If you can't get something at the library at 65 South, they will get it for you and bring it in from other libraries. And Saturday the 6th, uh, Clifford the Red Dog, dog will be yeah. there. Oh, bring your uh, kids. It's it's National Bring Your Kids to the Library Day. Um, we have some exciting news is that we have a Real Housewife actually running for selectmen, Margie Wiggins, so a shout out to Margie. Yeah. Um, to have a woman um, actually uh, running back on the Board of Selectmen is great. Um, yeah. A young candidate just raised his hand to run for town clerk, Connor Deegan. Very exciting. Just a, a young man who just graduated from college a couple, a couple years, years ago. ago. Yeah, oh, like with, youth. With, getting with, into, with, yeah. with, a ba with a degree in, in political science, in political science wow. on, on municipal affairs. Working with the former um, town clerk. Actually, the first person to sign his papers was the former town clerk. Yeah. So it's, it's a really neat uh, dynamic yeah. and yeah. things going in. You know, we're going into an election year. so. I know that um, and the Real Housewives have actually launched their website mm -hmm. and the, um, the subscriptions, the key tags are out um, and in the month of January we've gotten three newsletters out with 
discounts, the discounts, discounts and deals, and deals, to, deals to places from livery services to limos to going to your local butcher shop and show your car. Oh, well, you'll have to tell me about this. Oh, we'll yeah, yeah we'll are. have to get Pink right. Truck right. up on there. It's, it's, it's literally our yep. rule of law to the Real Housewives of Hoffington. Right. And net proceeds Hampton. go to um, or the, uh, local organizations and, and so that's that that, nice. Yeah. You know, so that's we did nice. a soft launch in December and a full launch in January. And now about 100 members are on there. It's and and, said, and it's yeah. been almost every day we're getting a call of someone wanting to advertise or offer a deal out there. Yeah. So um, stay well, tuned. It's a great place to advertise. You know, low and dollars, um, um, very welcoming. In that it's yes. um, yes. realhoffingtonhousewives.com uh, and check it out and yeah. we'll go from there. Um, but I think the weather's been mild. Isn't it great? Like hardly any snow. This time last year, we so were buried. <laughs> I'm afraid to say anything will end up where we were last uh, year. I know. I mean, but at least it's snow, short. The the snow getting had started this week last year. Yes. And considering that, you know, we're in short sleeves on I didn't January. Even wear a coat today. I mean, a week ago last Saturday, I was able to run an event in um, south of Boston and Patricia right. and Connie were able to come in and you know it was five six hundred people that came in and probably the worst snow we'd had the year and by the time the event ended snow was mild down right. and uh, you know and really appreciate these guys coming in to support well, congratulations from on you know the event that, that, was, that was from here. Sportsman's Absolutely. Tennis and Enrichment Center in Dorchester and we did the event in uh, Randolph and raised over two hundred thousand wow, dollars that that's night. Wow yeah. that's yeah. amazing. Yeah. So I'm glad you. for even some of the local support of coming out that way. Absolutely. Even Carolyn Dykema, our state rep, made it out there wow. for the event. So that was awesome. That is the, right. Um, right. So we had new uh, Hopkinton housewife, new new uh, members of the community, Tamoria and Bob Saba joined that night. So oh, yeah, nice. so we so have a lot of time. You've been busy. We keep busy. Yeah. It's been a pleasure having it's you. It's been great. Thank you, here. Dana. So really I'm good to meet that you. Darlene invited me. And awesome. Yeah. It's glad you're here. Sorry, Connie's not here, but I know. Sorry, it's nice to meet you. Yeah, you're nice sitting on it. That's actually where she sits. This is her spot. This is her spot. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's you're in good. Ginger's spot. <laughs> but um, have a great you. week, guys. Nice Thank you. Yeah. Thank Thanks for joining us. Bye bye now. I'm Dr. Jerry Goodman. And I'm Dr. John Mandeville. Age-related eye diseases such as cataracts, glaucoma, macular degeneration, and diabetic retinopathy affect nearly 37 million Americans. With an aging population and higher rates of conditions like diabetes, the number of visually impaired people is expected to increase substantially in the years ahead. While age may bring on vision disorders, many conditions are preventable, and everyone at any age should take steps to maintain good eye health. Here's what you can do. Get regular screenings to check for potential problems. Take care of your overall health, know your family history, and be alert to health and vision changes that could be signs of something serious. Wear eye protection when needed, at work, playing sports, or working at home with tools, including sunglasses to guard against damaging rays from the sun. For more information on eye health and protecting your vision, visit GetEyeSmart.org.